Welcome to this tutorial on constructing a confidence interval on y hat in simple regression. There are two types of intervals we can construct on y hat. One is on the mean value of y for a given x, and the second type of interval would be the individual value of y for a given x. Before we look at a problem, let's take a look at the two formulas for constructing these two confidence intervals. Let's start with a, the confidence interval for a mean response, and the formula for that is y hat plus n minus, then t of alpha divided in half, sy(x) that's the standard error, and then the square root of something called h sub i. I'll get to that in a moment, but let's now take a look at the formula for b, an individual response, and the formula starts the same way. We have y hat plus and minus t of alpha divided in half, times the standard error, syx, and here's where it's different from the formula for the mean response. We multiply that by the square root of 1 plus h sub i, instead of just the square root of h sub i. Okay, now that we have the two formulas, let's take a look at the formula for h sub i. It is 1 over n plus, in parentheses, x sub i minus x bar, close parentheses, squared, divided by the sum of, in parentheses, x sub i minus x bar squared. This denominator is also called SSX, or the sum of the squared x's. You can get it from Excel by running the descriptive statistics function and multiplying n minus 1 times the sample variance for x, as we will see in a moment. Now that we have the two formulas, we are ready to solve our problem. Let's do it both ways, a confidence interval on the mean response and a confidence interval on an individual response. To demonstrate, let's use this problem. A researcher wants to develop a model to predict the taxes of houses based on the age of the house. The researcher examines a sample of 19 single-family homes from a particular region. This table shows the taxes in column A and the age of the house in column B. A, find the regression line, determine the y-intercept and the slope. B, construct a 95% confidence interval estimate of the population mean response for a 15-year-old house. C, construct a 95% confidence interval estimate of an individual response for a 15-year-old house. Here are the sample data on an Excel spreadsheet. If you want to follow along, and I suggest you do, then pause this video and type in the values for x and y. By following along, you will understand this much better than just by watching. Okay, once we have the data, we need to determine the regression line for this data. You can do this two ways. Let me show you the simplest way first. Let's plot the data. Make sure that your x's, the independent variable, is in the first column, and your dependent variable, y, is in the second column. We want to predict taxes using the age of the house, so taxes is y, and age of house is x. So we're set up just right. Start by selecting the two columns with your variables. Here I'm selecting A1 through B20. Now click on Insert, Recommended Charts, and you'll see the scatter plot as recommended, or you can simply choose the scatter plot. Now click OK, and you can see here a nice scatter diagram of all the x's and y coordinates. To get a regression line, otherwise known as the y hat line, Click on this plus sign in the top right corner of the chart. This is the Charting Elements tool. Then check off Trend Line. Now you can see a trend line drawn to fit the data. But we're not done yet. We want to get the y-intercept and the slope. So here on the right you can see an arrow. Click and scroll down to where it says More Options. Click. Now scroll down to the very bottom and check off where it says Display Equation on Chart. And also check off where it says Display R Squared Value on Chart. Okay, now we can minimize this panel. And we can see the trend line is y is equal to minus 333.27x plus 
13,212, and our squared, the coefficient of determination, is 0.828. That means that 82.8% of the variation in property tax can be explained by the age of the house. Back to the regression line, also called the y-hat line, notice that Excel gives us the slope first and then the y-intercept. In statistics, we're used to writing the equation like this. y-hat is equal to b naught, the y-intercept, plus b1, the slope. But here it's reversed, so be careful. Just remember that the slope term is always connected with x, since the slope is defined as the increase in y for every one unit increase in x. So here the slope is negative 333.27, since it's the value connected with x, and the y-intercept, the value of y when x is 0, is 13,212. So the property tax on a brand new house would be $13,212, and then it would decrease by $333.27 for every year older the house is. So to answer part A, the regression line is y hat is equal to 13,212 minus 333.27x. And the y-intercept b naught is 13,212. The slope b1 is negative 333.27. Great, now we've solved part A. We're ready to solve part B. Part B, construct a 95% confidence interval of the population mean response for a 15-year-old house. So first we have to get y hat, that's the predicted value of y for a given x. So x is 15. Then plugging x into the y hat line, we get y hat is equal to 13,212 minus 333.27 times 15, so that's 13,212 minus 4,999.05, which is 8,212.95, so that's y hat. So the predicted value for a 15-year-old house is 8212.95. You can use a calculator here to get that number. So that's y hat, the predict value of y when x is 15. Now we want to construct a 95% confidence interval on the population mean response. So we need to compute y hat plus and minus t of alpha divided in half times syx, that's the standard error, times the square root of h sub i. We have y hat, that's 8,212.95, plus and minus this piece. You may recall this piece is called your margin of error. Let's get t of alpha first. You can use the t table under n minus 2 degrees of freedom. I'm going to use Excel, so I type in equal to t.inv.2t, since with confidence intervals you always split alpha in half because you have two tails, an upper tail and a lower tail. Now in parentheses I type in alpha, that's 0 0.05, for a 95% confidence interval, right? 1 minus 0.95 is 0 0.05. Then degrees of freedom is n minus 2 for simple regression. We have 19 observations, so our degrees of freedom is 17. Close parentheses, and we get 2.109816. So that is our t of alpha divided in half value. Now for the standard error, we can simply run a regression using the data analysis tool. So let's go to the data tab, click on data analysis, scroll down to regression. Now let's put in our y values in B1 through B20. And our x values are in A1 through A20. Now check off labels, since we have labels in the first row. Click OK, and on a new sheet we get everything we ever wanted to know, and then some. Alright, let's take a look at the formula for constructing a confidence interval on the mean response of y for a given x equal to a particular number, in this case x equal 15. So we have computed y hat, that's 8,212.95. And we have t of alpha divided in half, that's 2.109816.
Now we need SYX, the standard error, and we need the square root of H. So to get SYX, we simply look at the Excel output here, where it says standard error in cell B7, and it is 1565.227056. And now we need to calculate the square root of H. H is calculated as follows, 1 over N, plus parentheses x sub i minus x bar close parentheses squared over the sum of open parentheses x sub i minus x bar close parentheses squared. So 1 over n is easy and is the number of observations so we have 19 for this problem so it's just 1 over 19. Then plus, okay let's compute the numerator first that is x sub i, okay, that is the x that we're given for this problem, x is equal to 15. So we're computing this confidence interval for a 15 year old house. So x sub i is 15, minus x bar, okay, so x bar is the average of the x's, and we'll need to get that by running a descriptive statistics. So to do that, let's go back to the sheet where the data are, and click on the data tab, click on the data analysis tool, scroll to descriptive statistics, and for the input range we need to input the X column, so that would be A1 through A20, then check off labels in the first row, and then summary statistics, check that off, click OK, and here we can see the mean of the X's, that's X bar, is 20.26316. So let's write the formula for H here. It's 1 over N plus X minus X bar squared over the sum of X minus X bar squared. Okay, we have 1 over 19. Plus, now we have the numerator here. That's X minus X bar, so that's 15 minus 20.26316 then squared so that is for the numerator 27.70085 and now for the denominator we need this this is called SSX the sum of the squares for the X's so if you have SSX that's great if not we can get it by taking n minus 1 times the sample variance for X so n minus 1 is 18, right? 19 minus 1. Then the sample variance is in cell B8. That's 100.31578. So to calculate the denominator SSX, we take 18 times 100.3158, and that is 1805.6842. OK. So let's take 27.70087, the numerator, divided by SSX, the denominator, which is 1805.6842, and we get 0 0.015341. Now add that to 1 over 19, and we get 0 0.067972 for H. Now we need the square root of that for the confidence interval, so let's take the square root of that equal to SQRT and then in parentheses 0 0.067972 and we get 0 0.26071. And so now we have the third piece of the formula, so we have all the components we need to solve this problem. Let's multiply these three pieces of the formula, T of alpha divided in half, SYX, and the square root of H. These three pieces make up the margin of error. Let's abbreviate that with the letters MOE for margin of error. So MOE is T of alpha divided in half, 2.109816, times SYX, which is 1565.2271, times the square root of H, which is 0.26071. So for the margin of error, if we multiply those three pieces, we get 860.9709. So now we need to calculate the lower and upper limits for the confidence interval. 
For the lower limit, we take y hat, that's 8212.95, we take y hat minus the margin of error, and we get 7351.98. And for the upper limit, we take y hat plus the margin of error, so that's 8212.95 plus the margin of error, 860.9709. And we get for the upper limit, 9,073.92. That is written like this. Okay, now we can easily answer part B. Most of the work is already done. Part B asks for a 95% confidence interval for an individual response when X, the age of the house, is 15. So here is the formula we use. Y hat plus and minus T of alpha divided in half times SYX, the standard error, times, and here's where the formula is slightly different, the square root of 1 plus H. So here we have 1 plus H. Okay, we have H, so 1 plus H is 1.067972, and then the square root of that is 1.033428. Now, putting the three pieces together, we can calculate the margin of error for an individual response. That is 2.1098, that's T of alpha, times the standard error, 1,565.227056, times the square root of 1 plus H, that's 1.033428, and we get, when we multiply those three pieces, we get 3,412.72. That's our margin of error. So now for the lower and upper limits, we need to subtract and add the margin of error from y hat. So we take y hat minus the margin of error. y hat was 8,212.95. So we take y hat minus the margin of error, and we get 4,800.22. And for the upper limit, we take y hat plus the margin of error, and we get 11,625.68. And that is written like this. So now we have the prediction interval for an individual response for x equal 15, and that is between 4,800 and 11,625. And that's it. That's how you solve both confidence intervals on y hat for a given value of x. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope you learned something.